We're glad to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak back with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Of course, we talk about retirement planning here on the show, and that is the focus of the foundation as well. And throughout the program today, we're going to be telling you how you can become better informed about your retirement future, how you can gain the confidence you need to retire successfully in the 21st century. It all starts with getting that education. And that's what the foundation sets out to do. So we'll tell you how you can get registered for upcoming courses held throughout the year at local universities here in our community and how you can get one step closer to your ideal retirement. Kirk and Paul, one of the things that we have to keep in mind when we're planning for a successful retirement are looking at the risks that are out there. And one risk continues to get overlooked, and that's taxes in retirement. Explain to us why taxes are such a significant issue in retirement. Well, so I, I think there's there's so many misconceptions around taxes, retirement, and what tax planning really means. Taxes are important because the more you have to pay in taxes every year, the larger the withdrawals, the more money you're going to have to take out of your savings to maintain the lifestyle you want. So I know historically the financial service industry, and they currently still do this, they're so focused on this idea of growth, growth, growth. They lose focus on whatever that you grow, you're going to have to pay taxes on when you withdraw them. So the disconnect is the difference between managing investments for performance, but managing income for performance. And that income Ta- the, the tax performance, the less we have to pay in taxes when we're taking income out is really what is going to extend the life of your money. And it's going to reduce your chances of outliving your money because of so many unknown risks that people miss. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, it's somewhat common sense, but people don't talk about it. I mean, obviously, if you can save $10,000 a year in taxes, you're not taking 10000 more out of your investments, right? Obviously, that means your investments will last longer. So every all of you who are concerned that you may run out of money at some point. Well, if you start thinking about saving money in your taxes in the future, you will be less likely running out of money. And that's something we talk a lot about in our class. I mean, that's a big, it's a huge piece of our class, right? Yeah, because Paul, this is the buzz buzzword right now, tax planning and retirement. Everyone's talking about it, but find me somebody that actually really does tax planning in retirement besides being appropriate or tax strategic with their investments. Forget the investment part for a second. When you have to take money out of your accounts and when you start collecting your social security and when you start collecting your pensions and you have to start taking your required minimum distributions from accounts you've never paid taxes on, that's a ton of income that you are going to need to take, be forced to take in many cases, with tremendous amounts of taxes being paid. The opportunity from a tax planning perspective is being able to anticipate those traps that are going to occur in the future and find the most efficient path to take income for the 30, 40 years in retirement. And I can tell you, we don't talk a lot about our private practice on this show. This show is about education, the foundation, the charity. But I can tell you in our private practice, the majority of our clients are saving hundreds and hundreds of thousands three to five hundred thousand dollars over their retirement in taxes extending the life of their money not because of what we're investing in but it's because we've planned out when we're taking income from which accounts at what age so to minimize taxes and there's you you need to think of retirement as levers there's a lot of levers to pull it's not just investments is tons of levers you're going to need to pull And the problem is most people don't know those levers, even what they are, and then how to even begin to think about how to pull the levers at the right times to create the greatest efficiencies in tax planning and minimize risk of outliving their money. And these are the things that we cover in our eight-hour course that are being taught at all the major universities. They're taught over two evenings or one full Saturday. To attend one of our courses, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, we give in the class this sort of very simple illustration, 
that it's simple, but it really, I think, reflects this, which is we show that mountain, right? Yep. So, right. So as we're, you know, working and we're young and we're accumulating our wealth, we're climbing up this mountain, right? And what we care about is growth and saving. And then we start getting close to the top of that mountain. And at some point we start going down the mountain and, and, and things change. And I think this is the key to this tax planning issue. Once you retire, it's really about distribution, isn't it? It's really about, it's less about, because you're not going to move the needle a lot. At some point, you're not going to grow your money much when you start t- you stop working and take money out, right? Oh, you're right. It's, it's about the distribution. It's about, that's right. It's about distribution. And this is where tax planning is so important. The problem is most advisors don't focus on distribution. They're continuing to focus on accumulation even after retirement. Right. And when they start talking about tax planning, Paul, what they're talking about is making sure they're not buying actively managed mutual funds in a taxable account. Right. You're giving them benefit of the doubt. Oh, I know. Many don't even do that. But no, yes, no, you're that's right. The, that's the best. But but that's what they're at least in yes. the literature when that's they're right. on TV, the experts writing the books. These are the things they're talking about tax planning and retirement as being tax efficient in their investment strategies and, and what kind of investments to have and which accounts. And for retirees, they think that's what tax planning and retirement is. The problem is the advisor is going to tell you to go talk to your CPA and your CPA is going to be like, OK, here's tax planning for a year. No one will sit down with you and show you. That's what we do in the classes. Over a 30-year period, this is what you're going to pay in taxes. This is how to calculate what you're going to pay in taxes. Now let's work backwards. And how do I manage the tax brackets to minimize taxes, knowing that there are so many pockets of opportunity to not pay taxes on capital gains and dividends if I'm in the right tax brackets, to minimize the taxable portion of our Social Security if we take it in during the right time to minimize the amount of taxable income we're forced to take in our 70s if we understand what our liabilities are going to be in our 70s and then work backwards to reposition those assets when I'm in my 60s. These are the strategies. This is why the class takes seven hours, right? It's not an accident we teach these classes at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We're at all the major universities with the exception of Wayne State, and we used to and we will again. When it works out, they close the campus we are at. But the point is, you train for your job, train for your career, train for any athletic sporting events you're involved in. You got to train for retirement. And that's why you need to attend one of our seven-hour courses. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, and we're glad you've joined us for another edition of the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozag, and we've been telling you about Kirk and Paul, their foundation, and what it aims to do to help you gain that confidence you need to retire successfully in the 21st century. You can learn more about getting registered for these courses by going to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Org. You can also register by calling the phone number 800-240-8981. As a reminder, these are courses that are taught either a one-day intensive course or over the course of two days, and they're held at local universities right here in our community, including Eastern Michigan University, University of Michigan, also Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. So call today or visit that website, retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk and Paul, we're talking about taxes and retirement, maybe a more significant issue than many people realize. In fact, you call this, Kirk and Paul, a tax trap. How so? Well, it is. You know, I I think it's helpful, and we probably should mention this just about every segment. Today's show is really about those people who have saved some resources for retirement, right? The average baby boomer who will retire with $200,000 saved, there's greater challenges that we need to focus on than tax planning. But the rest of you who have saved and have resources, million, two, three, four, five million dollars saved for retirement, the trap is that you don't recognize the amount of taxable income you're going to be forced to take when you're in your mid 70s and 80s. The numbers are significant because you have been taught to save all your money in pre-tax retirement accounts. So the majority of most of your money is in accounts you've never paid taxes on. And then, then they are going to ask you in your 60s, when do you want to take your Social Security? 
when should you retire, which many of you wait too long reducing your tax planning abilities, and whether I should take a pension or a lump sum without even knowing that amount of money you're going to be forced to take in your 70s and 80s, whether you want it or not, be putting you in such a high tax bracket, making your Medicare cost more money because it's means tested, destroying the surviving spouse because they go from married filing joint to single when you die, but they still have to take all that taxable money out every year. There's so many opportunities to fix this. It just requires custom individualized planning which takes so much time that our industry is unwilling to give you and this is what we do in the class is try to empower you to understand what you at least need to know and focus on so you can try to find the right person to help you because you're going to need help you know kirk what you just said was a bit of an oxymoron i don't know if you realize you said it just requires and then you listed all these things that no one's doing <laughs> so it's not just it's actually fair very difficult but let me you know Kirk, I shared with you in the break, I have a, you know, you know, I have a very, very good friend of mine and I, we don't work with friends. I mean, we're very sensitive about this issue, right? Conflicts and all that. I have a very good friend of mine who sent me his financial, new financial retirement plan last night. And I spent about an hour going through with him. First of all, I didn't tell you this. He didn't even know what an RMD was. When I, the guy showed him at the table, he had no idea what a required minimum distribution was. He didn't know that at 72 years years old, he was going to be forced to retire. And this was a retirement plan, okay? Now, basically, they besides using an 8% growth rate, okay, <laughs> which I, it was obscene, he, when I pointed out that it, when he's 75 years old, he's going to be taking about $100,000 more than he needs, paying an enormous amount of taxes. He had no idea. So he, he turned to me and said, why has nobody, why did he, this is costing him a lot of money for this service, I, by the way. I, I'm sure he and is, this, this I know his was, wealth. And, then, and this was an expert. He was set an expert. CFP, guaranteed. And the word tax, the word tax, I'm serious, was not even in the plan. Once he real, and then he, here's another, here's another thing. Legacy is important to him. He wants to leave money to his son in a way that's best for him. He had no idea that when he dies, his son's going to be forced to take all of this Pre-tax accounts over 10 years. When I shared all this with him, he was blown away and, and just couldn't believe no I one talked to him. I bet he was angry. Very angry. Very he frustrated. Be, yeah. Right? Because I know he owns businesses. Yeah, he's a successful man. Very successful. He's got- Smart. He is smart. He's highly right. educated. Right. He's a doctor. He's a doctor. And he's got attorneys, uh, CPAs, financial experts, so-called right. experts, right. all of which, by the way, I guarantee you have never spoken to one another. Their team isn't talking. That's right. a whole other problem. Right. And Paul, it is important because people are going to say, what's the big deal if he has to take $100,000 more? The, the big deal than, than he planned to live on. The big deal is in his 60s, he's going to live on that less income. All of you, you guys are going to live on what the, your, the industry suggests is what you should, which is the 4% rule. So in your 60s, you're going to live on 4%. That's what you're going to live on, maybe 5 but when you're 80, it's gonna you're gonna be required to take six percent just from your retirement accounts. All That's it. All taxable. All taxable. Then your social security, then your pensions. All taxable, by the way, now because you blew it up, right? And so he's gonna live in his healthiest, most active years in his 60s, early in his retirement. We call them the go-go years, on less money. And then be surprised when he gets in his 70s and 80s that he has to take over $100,000 more than he was living on in his 60s when he could spend it, right? Exactly. And by the way, exactly. in a much higher tax bracket, legacy is important to him. That means a lot less is going to his kids because it's going to taxes. Going to the government. And then you have sequence of return risk. Right, we're going to talk about this next segment, Paul, because this. I is, said that to him. He said sequence. Of, he seriously he had no idea. No idea. But when I explained it to him in a simple analogy, it like totally made. Yeah, sense. you're forced to take out six percent of your investments, whether the market's up or down, and none of your planners or advisors are setting up accounts for you to pivot to when you have that recession or market event, right? You've got to take that money out, whether the market's up or down, Paul. They have to, right? No matter right. what. And that's the trap. That's the sequence of return. You can't take money out of accounts that are down in value. You can't catch up. But they did have a solution. What's that? Bond funds. Yeah, sure. Seriously. That, that, yeah. In a low interest rate environment with I'm interest rates you. raising. And how does he have a bond fund if they're going to project an 8% growth rate? That can't happen. I know. 
It's just made up garbage. These people are making stuff up because they want a cookie cutter, one size fits all solution, and they don't want the liability of tax planning. You got to come to a class. You got to spend seven hours so you know what we're trying to explain to you. You guys are probably thinking, what are they talking? Spend seven hours, understand the traps and the solutions for your wealth that you've amassed your entire life. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can attend courses in your home or streaming it live from the university so you can sit in your home if you're afraid because of COVID, we get it. Or you can come to the universities. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. And there is much more straight ahead on the program with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Always a pleasure to be joined by Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're glad you're with us, spending some of your day on the show with us today. I'm Megan Mozak. We're talking about one of the biggest risks to your retirement, and that is the risk of taxes. Kirk and Paul are explaining how problematic taxes could be for you and to all you've saved, all you've worked so hard for in retirement want to tell you about how you can get registered for the courses that Kirk and Paul, the foundation, teaches throughout the year at local universities. You can register today. It's as easy as going to retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call to register 800-240-8981. As a reminder, you can watch the courses and interact virtually, or you can attend in person at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. If you haven't already, be sure to like the foundation on Facebook. Simply search for Retirement Education Foundation. Now, Kirk and Paul, when we talk about taxes, this is something that tends to catch investors by surprise in retirement. Just how impactful can taxes be when it comes to someone's life savings? Well, it's it's huge. And if anyone listened to our last segment, you can see how passionate Paul and I, quite frankly, are, are, the foundation is in our courses. We bring the CPA, the attorneys in, and we spend a tremendous amount of time talking about tax planning in your retirement and then for the surviving spouse and then for your loved ones. This is a big part of this class. There is no secret sauce or there's no voodoo. I I think that's my catchphrase I constantly say to investing. Unfortunately, that is the value proposition the financial service industry continues to promote. Like somebody has the best allocation model for you to have a successful retirement. And it really has very little, the investments and the growth of those investments, it has very little to do with your successful outcomes in retirement. I know it's hard for people to hear that or appreciate that without understanding or spending seven hours in a classroom, but there's something called sequence of return risk, which we constantly talk about. And you're asking, why are we talking about sequence of return risk when we're talking about taxes? Because it all contributes. Sequence of returns just means what does the market do when you are pulling money out of your investments, right? And a sequence of return risk is if I'm pulling money out of my investments, when the market goes down, the chances of me being able to recover is not very high, right? In fact, if we have a market event in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. It's simple math. You lose 34%, you need 53% to break even. That's the math. So, When the market goes down, you pull money out to live on. Now, don't tell me I just won't pull money out. You don't have a choice, remember? Required minimum distributions. You have to pull money out of your investments, retirement accounts, once you're 72 years old. And it starts at 4%. By the time you're 80, it's 6%. By the time you're 90, it's almost 9%. You have to take out every single year, whether the market's up or down. Now, here's the problem, Paul. Not only are they forced to pull the money out, the amount that they're forced to take out is so much greater than people expect, and they have to take out greater because they have to pay those additional taxes to net what they want. So that's why tax planning is part of this. 
you have to find ways to minimize the amount of taxable income you're going to have to take out in your 70s to minimize the sequence of return risk. In addition, you need to be able to know what accounts to pivot to when we have market events so that you don't have sequence of return risk. Yeah, no, it, it, I think that the, the what people don't realize, and again, I don't, I don't want to keep going back to this conversation I had last night, but I think people don't realize that people always assume that they have control over when they take income or how much they take. And, 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 and the reality is, is that, first of all, once you retire, even if you don't have to take RMDs, you still have to live. And, you know, people say, well, I'll just go back to work if the market crashes. How many people do we meet every single day in the early 60s who quit their job and can't find another job? Ageism exists. People don't want to hire high-paying 60-year-olds. I'm sorry. Just the way it is, right? So th- the reality is you need money to live on. At 72, you have to take money to live on. And again, if the market's crashing, this is the worst thing that can happen to you. That is, by the way, that comment is insane. I hate that. What, what comment? The comment that if if the market's doing poorly, I just, I, I'll just i live on less. What? You've worked 30, 40 years of your life so that you can adjust your lifestyle based upon something you can't control in the markets, right? As if it's that easy to live on less. I mean, the reality is not so easy. But but why should, here's the, here's the question. Why should you have to? You should. I mean, this you is your retirement. You're right. You've worked 60 years. Do you really want to enter retirement and then all of a sudden not do the things you want to do? But that's the retirement plan they, they're given. So when things are tight, we'll just pull back on spending. And when th- that's their answer to sequence of return risk, by the way, which <laughs> there's so many things wrong. Please, everybody, whether you if you're doing it this yourself, I, and I know a lot of smart people are doing it this, themselves. Engineers, this is who attends our courses, right? These people who are attending our courses tend to have four or five years post high school education. They're do it yourselfers. They're engineers, executives, CFOs, CPAs, pension fund managers from from fin- in the financial service industry. Look, <laughs> there are a lot more levers than choosing investments and saving money. That's what you've done, and you've done it well. Many of you have done it really well. You've chosen some investments. Maybe you've done that well. Maybe you've just gotten lucky. One, or, It doesn't matter. Who cares? And you save money, and so you've amassed this. So now you think you're an expert, right? All of us think we're experts at something because you have a good outcome. The variables in retirement, once you retire, and your relationship with money once you retire, it's a whole different ball game. There are so many levers you're going to have to pull and decisions you're going to have to make. If you don't spend seven, eight hours to educate yourself, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to feel vulnerable. You're going to have anxiety as you age and things get difficult to connect dots. And you're going to way underlive the retirement you could otherwise live because of ego and you think you've got it figured out. Stop. Stop. Come educate yourself. Be Just, just take that leap. to. Ed- I, 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 I'm begging people here, Paul. Because I see, I mean, these, this is, look at your friend. How smart is this guy? And he has help. And he's still not getting any answers. Spend seven hours, go to one of the universities, or stream it straight from your home if you're, if you're not comfortable going to the universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And the show continues right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you've tuned in. Megan Mozak alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you're ready to sign up for the courses that the foundation sponsors, you're welcome to go to the website to learn more, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. These courses are taught at local universities right here in our community, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Your choice, either a one- or two-day course, it is $29 to attend, and that registration fee goes to charity. You can learn more again and get registered at retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. We've been talking about taxes here on the program and just how much they can impact your retirement 
and your future. What's interesting to me, Kirk and Paul, is just how much taxes can impact these big decisions that we all have to make in retirement, right? It does. I think this is another disconnect for people. When it comes to figuring out when to collect your Social Security, whether to take a lump sum or a pension benefit, how much is Medicare going to cost because it's means tested? And how about just when I should or shouldn't retire? People don't recognize the importance taxes play on when you should retire as a big variable. Many people leave our courses, Paul, saying, I'm retiring now. I, I've won. I have more than I need. I just didn't know that I had enough to give me what I want. And the longer I work, the more I'm going to have to pay taxes for the rest of my life. In the next two to three years I plan to work, I'm going to work for free. I'm working for free or my children. It doesn't benefit me because I'm going to pay so much more taxes because I'm losing this opportunity. There's an opportunity, Paul, we're going to talk about between when you retire and 72 to fix a lot of your tax problems. There's a tremendous amount of strategies to use, and we'll maybe talk about a few of those strategies as we go along in the segment. But but you've got to retire to do it, right? You got to have the that window. We call it a runway of time. And so going back to all these decisions, how many people recognize that when you take Social Security impacts taxation on all of your other investments, your capital gains, your dividends, and your RMDs, your IRAs, and how much your taxes, what percentage of that Social Security is going to be taxed. They're all intertwined. So it's interesting, going back to my friend, he was the advice was to take Social Security at a certain age, and it was simply based on health, right? It was simply a break-even equation. A calculator no, online. A calculator. Nobody even... Ex- he, I don't think he fully even understood 85% of Social Security was taxable, let alone that you should consider when you take Social Security based on if you're doing tax planning. So, you know, as you're talking about all the things, Kirk, that you have to consider, you realize why people don't do it. I mean, if, I mean, when you really think about it, if you have to figure out when you take Social Security, if you take lump sum and how you take the lump sum, how do you manage Medicare expenses, right? How do you, how do you reduce future RMDs, right? Hell, when to retire. When to retire. When you think about all of these decisions, and, and, and as you always say, when you move one lever, five levers move, you can appreciate why people don't do it. It's so time consuming, right? It's a lot of work. When you I'm say, not saying, I'm, when I say appreciate, I want to clarify. I didn't say it's right. I, I, saw, I saw your face. No, no, no. Yeah, so, you, so, so when you say people, I want to be clear. You're saying not talking about the people. because Advisors. It's beyond, it's beyond their scope. It's advisors. The, even yes. the, the wealthiest really advanced – I meet CPAs that that don't get this right, right all right. the time. I, I I meet CFOs for Fortune 500 companies that hire us in our private practice that that didn't understand these things. It's you're talking when you say people, you're talking about our industry, our industry, That's people right. in the financial service industry. Why they aren't doing real planning around these things or even talk? Well, they may talk about it at a ten thousand foot level, but they're not implementing any strategies to make these decisions because it. All of you are so unique, different. You have different types of investments, different types of assets, different levers. You have different variables, age differences, years deferral before you retire versus when you retire and the difference between you and your spouse's age. Some of you are saying, those are all custom. They're all unique. That each one, There's no software to produce these outcomes. It doesn't exist if it did. I mean, I'm a half a million dollars in our private practice into trying to develop software to come up with simple solutions, and there isn't any. There isn't. It still takes us 40 to 50 hours to construct every one of our clients' plans. The whole purpose of us teaching these classes, Paul, has always been so people are armed with enough knowledge to be able to weed out the BS of our industry. I really feel that way. It's to arm them to be able to know what they should be looking for and what they need to get them, give themselves freedom in retirement. Well, I, yeah, that's true with all education, right? I mean, the whole idea I of being so. educated. I hope so. Right? Knowledge is power. The goal is to empower people to be able to make good decisions and be able to recognize when they're making a bad decision or someone is recommending something that's not good for them. That's, that's education. We, so, all, we all do it. So they need, people need to understand a product is not a plan. Someone selling you something 
or having a great investment or investment strategies, those are not plans. If someone is not laying out for you 30 years of income coming from different accounts, depending on the market volatility and conditions. Remember, we're going to have a market event every four to seven years, major market event, recession, every four to seven years on average. That means what? Three to five. Six times throughout your retirement, we're going to have major events going on with big decisions. If they're not talking about all of these things and projecting out what does your taxes look like in your 70s and 80s, and what can we do today to minimize those taxes in the future so you don't have to take out as much so your money lasts longer, to give you more freedom and flexibility. If they're not talking about that, you've got the wrong person. You don't have a plan. A, a, a dial telling you the probability of you outliving your money or not is not a plan. These, what are they, e-money, uh, what's a money guy pro, those aren't retirement plans. Those are, those are generated by spending 45 minutes to an hour on a software that spits out these outcomes that, that isn't custom and individualized to you and has no tax planning in it. Zero. I was going to say, that's Zero the key. Tax Zero tax planning. Zero tax planning. And that's really what drives so many of your decisions because it, it's income planning. That's what it comes down to. Spend seven hours, come to one of our courses at the major, all the major universities or stream it from your home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul is straight ahead. Back with financial instructors, Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, I'm Megan Mozak. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're talking about taxes today. And if you'd like to learn more, be sure to register for the courses that the foundation sponsors throughout the year held at local universities or from the comfort of your own home. These courses are also streamed live. So you can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org to register and learn more. Again, it's retirementplanningedu.org or you can call to register 800-240-8981. Talking about taxes, as I said on the show, and there's a lot to get into. An hour does not cover it by any stretch. I do want to ask this, Kirk and Paul, when it comes to lump sums or pensions and making that decision, how big a, a component are taxes when you're trying to figure out what's best for you and your family? It's gigantic. It's probably the second most important thing. And in, in this is really relevant right now, particularly in, in Michigan with some of the decisions that a lot of people need to make right now. And I would encourage everyone to go back and listen to our last show, Lump Sums versus Pension or go to the website retirementplanningedu.org and watch our lump sum versus pension discussion and why, if you're close to retirement, you need to really think about doing it right now because things are about to change for you. The benefits are going to change, and you need to be aware of why and what things you need to consider. Taxes is a major piece of this because... Let's move past whether we can recreate a similar type of guaranteed insured income. Let's set that aside. Look, everyone needs to know you can take a lump sum benefit, reinsure it the same way your employer would have, and create your own personal pension. That is easy, right? You just need to find the right person to do it. That's the easy part. And let's set aside the fact that right now your lump sums, most of your lump sums at the big automakers and TV studios, and, and, and we're seeing a lot of HP, IBM, your lump sum is going to create more, can create more insured pension income if you take it and do it yourself right now. Let's set that aside for a minute, that debate. The biggest factor in why people for many years we have taught, not always, but the majority of time to take your lump sum is because you get to control when you take income from all from money that is all going to be taxable. See, you can take your lump sum and roll it into an IRA. Now, you're going to have to take all of this taxable income either way, but you get to control when, you get to control 
the ability of what's left for the your loved ones if you die early. You get to control and create extra potential benefits like long-term care if you do it properly. But from a tax perspective, you get to control how much of that taxable income you're going to need to take. Many of you, when you do your calculations, you're going to realize when you're 75 years old, between taking your pension, your required minimum distributions from your retirement accounts, and your Social Security, you're going to realize that is way above and beyond the amount of income you wanted or needed in retirement. You know, Kirk, right? for sure. You, you had said earlier between retirement and 72 is really key, right? Yes. And, and we didn't really explain it. We don't have time to explain it. But I think for pe- people to understand what you're saying, they need to understand that if you have been to retire before 72, that window of opportunity between when you retire and 72 is huge from a tax planning perspective. And if you take that lump sum, you can control not taking that pension until 72 and take advantage of that window. And again, you got to come to a cluster. It's, it's hard to explain this, but that window is a huge, there's huge opportunities in that window. Paul, there is, because if you figure, here's the other thing. What if you've saved non-IRA money? You have what we call taxable, non-IRA money. You have Roth money you've saved. Many of you won't even get to use it. You won't even spend it between all of this other income they're going to force you to take that's taxable, causing your Medicare be more expensive, destroying the surviving spouse because if they go from married filing joint to single. The right answer is being able to take the lump sum often, not always, and repositioning, Roth converting some of that money. Now, I'm not getting into what Roth converting versus contributions are. They're different. Just know there is no limits to how much you can Roth convert, how much money you put that you take, you convert it. It doesn't matter what your adjusted gross income, there's no phase out. And so what we teach in the class is the window during that runway between retirement and 72 is repositioning, Roth converting, controlling your taxable income in that time frame, managing when you take your Social Security. That's why Social Security is such an important decision. <laughs> There's so many moving parts. It's hard, Paul, to, to explain this in an eight-minute segment. But just know lump sum gives you flexibility control and you still can recreate insured pension income from it. You just get to recreate the amount you actually need of taxable money and it gives you the ability to Roth convert, reposition. This gets into like your charitable giving by using the appropriate strategies like donor advice funds or QCDs or charitable trusts. You don't have to be super wealthy to use these strategies. It's just knowing these strategies exist and finding someone that will talk to you about taxes to show you how you can actually give to charity and end up with more money in your pocket over your lifetime. And it helps you save so much and your loved ones so much money in taxes. You know, I know I, I, you know, I didn't make perfect sense of all that because there's so many variables. To That's why the class is seven, eight hours. Paul. It's also why it's much easier as an advisor to just pick some mutual funds and focus on investments. This is why people, that's why our industry really to be, as I'm listening to you and, and feeling bombarded by all of these things you're saying, and, and, and I do this every day, you know, honestly, this is again, why our industry prefers to focus on the investment side. It's so much easier than doing all the things you just talked about, right? That's not, not best for them, but it's so much easier. It is easier. It, it, it 100% easier. I, I, we see CFPs across the country who aren't doing any real planning, tax right. planning. And here's the thing. People, when they come to the class, you may, you, you may not be able to do this yourself. But at the end of the day, you're going to know what you should look for. You're going to be a much better consumer, which is really important, to figure out who you should find to make sure they do what's best for you. And that's, that's the key. At least they'll know the variables, right. all the levers to, that need to be pulled. Right. And they'll understand whether someone is just trying to sell them something or if someone's really going to spend 50 hours to construct them your individualized plan right Right. and so seven hour course all the major universities right now we're being taught we're we're back in or you can stream it from your home all you have to do is make a 29 dollars donation to charity to attend if you'd like to register go to retirementplanningedu.org that's retirementplanningedu.org and kirk and paul will be back right after this 
Happy you're with us today for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. And we are having an eye-opening conversation on taxes in retirement. And boy, what you don't know when it comes to taxes could really impact you and not for the positive. That's for sure. We're trying to give you as much information as we can. There's a whole lot more to learn, and you can do that at the courses that are sponsored by the Retirement Education Foundation. Learn more, get registered today. Go to retirementplanningedu.org, $29 to attend. That registration goes to charity. To register or go online, the phone number 800-240-8981 or go to retirementplanningedu.org. So I said it was an eye-opening conversation today about taxes, Kirk and Paul. I bet you get this from a lot of people when you start to break down what's at stake when it comes to their life savings. How does planning, overall retirement planning, come into the picture when you're trying to mitigate taxes? So planning is key, right? I think it was Warren Buffett who said in idiot with a plan will outsmart a genius with no plan. And I promise you, very smart people, there are a lot of idiots that are going to outsmart you in retirement because they're going to have a plan and you're not. You think you do, but you don't. You don't know all the levers. There's just so much to know that you don't even know that you don't know. <laughs> I mean, makes no, that actually sincerely. makes sense. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's remarkable. And unfortunately, we, were, we have been taught and trained to turn to the professionals for help here. And the professionals honestly are are letting our baby boomers down. I, I'm not going to say everybody down. I think there's plenty of good advisors that are helping people accumulate wealth. I think some people doing a great job out there. But this is a different phase. All of you who have advisors that you think have done a great job for you, great. They've helped you accumulate and amass wealth. But if they haven't talked to you about tax planning, when to take income from which accounts at what age, how to minimize taxes, how and when you should take Social Security, not based upon a calculator, come on, that's silly, or a break-even rule, that's crazy. Or what happens when one spouse dies? What's income look like? And then what happens to Medicare costs? If they're not talking to you about a plan, a real plan, then you are with somebody that If they haven't built you a plan and you're within five to 10 years of retirement, you are working with someone that is specializing in accumulating wealth. They can say they do these other things. That's great that they say they do them, but they don't. It's like going to a general surgeon to go have surgery on your knee or on your brain from a neurosurgeon. They're good doctors. (laughs) They're good surgeons, but they are not specialized in what you need special, a specialist in. Again, this isn't for the average baby boomers retiring with $200,000 safe for retirement. It can be cookie cutter. It's not that complicated. But if you've amassed wealth, I think people don't realize a million dollars. For some people, they, they don't think that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. You have a lot of decisions. You got a lot, a lot of levers to pull. You got a, Most of you that have saved money, I don't worry about you outliving your money. I worry about you way underspending what you otherwise could have been spending Because you don't have a plan, you don't know all the levers, you don't have the knowledge so that you can feel confident and comfortable to have the freedom to spend. Yeah. You know, you said a million dollars. That is a lot of money. But I, but, but I think it's important to understand. I meet a lot of people in Ann Arbor, Paul, yeah. with three, four million dollars. You don't think they have a lot of they money. They don't like it when I tell right. them they're, they're, they're a one percenter. They, they don't. They don't. They don't. <laughs> but, so here's the, here's the key, though. You could have all that money, but if you don't plan right... And you make some big mistakes early on, especially from a tax planning, it could be devastating. So when we, you know, every show we talk about importance of planning, every show, I think it's fair to say that when it comes to taxes, maybe the most important part of planning, because at the end of the day, anticipating the future, think about where you're going to be down the road is key to knowing what decisions you make today. And if you don't do that, you don't do that. One day you're going to wake up and it, you won't have the, any levers to pull. No more levers. No more levers. They're gone. And guess what? You won't have any control. Everybody else will be controlling. You'll have no control over your future. That's not a place, if you've amassed a lot of wealth, you've re- worked really hard. That's not where you want to be. You don't have to be that. Paul, it's so funny. We got through this whole tax show. Yeah. And we didn't talk about the fact that taxes are on sale right now. Taxes are going up, yeah, yeah. right? And still we no should one's have started. That, we, we should have started, started the there. show with that, yeah. No one is even addressing, their, everyone right. Everyone talks, the buzzword is tax planning right now, everyone, you're going to see it on TV, all the big wirehouses are going to talk about it. 
Tell them, show me your tax planning. Not where you're investing my money. That Where you're investing my money is tax efficient investing, but not tax planning for income. You're retired. You need to generate cash flow income. What levers am I pulling when, at what age, and how do I minimize taxes? Kirk, you got to restate. When you say tax, you said that really quickly. Yep. What Tax on sale, that, that's a pretty powerful statement. Most of, Maybe the most important piece of the show. What do you mean? Well, uh, so the historical average, average marginal tax bracket is 56%. That's historical average. We are so below the average, and we are spending like drunken sailors, literally. We are spending, we've had... And obviously, and low, pandemics and low, in, and low interest rates that are only at some point going to keep going up. Artificially manipulated low interest rates. Right. That we're going to have to pay. We and our children are going to pay. And that's fine. Look, we're not here to debate the decisions that were made. They were made. They got us through some really bad events over the last 15, 20 years. We have. But we can't. Got to pay the piper at some point. It, that's right. And so, so if you're in a camp that you think taxes are going to go up. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you're not going to be in a good position when you're in seven in your seventies and you no longer have, like Paul said, any levers or any control to manage those taxes. Your time to manage your taxes are right now. Between now and when you turn seventy-two years old is your greatest opportunity to fix a massive problem that are going to blow up, right? And so. Educate yourself so you know what you should be looking for and what the levers even are. You need to start there. It's a seven-hour course taught at all our major universities, Michigan, Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, Oakland University. We're also streaming it live. We're streaming it so you can stay in your own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. To register or check out the classes, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.